Usually on Freedom From Fire, we share with you what you would expect from a fire department. We discuss fire safety, talk with emergency responders, and generally show you how to be safe. However, on today's show, we're going to give you a look at some of our charitable efforts that you might not even know we do. One of those efforts includes our new way to commemorate those who died on 9-11. Stay tuned for that, plus a whole lot more on Freedom From Fire. I'm your host for this episode, Deputy Commissioner of Planning and Community Risk Reduction, Craig Murphy. Here at Freedom From Fire, we aim to improve your quality of living by giving you fire and life safety information. We also introduce you to our local safety partners. On today's episode, we're looking at two of the fire department's charitable efforts that go beyond our everyday work. This year, we wanted to do something to, more to commemorate 9-11 something that would not only engage our members, but would challenge our citizens as well. We also chose to memorialize one of our own fallen members with an activity aimed at educating our youth. We'll start the show by discussing the first annual 9-11 Memorial Stair Climb and 5K Walk held on Saturday, September 23rd. This event honored memories of the 400, 343 fallen heroes lost in the attack on the World Trade Center on September 11, 2001. In partnership with the PFD Family Association, Red Paul Emergency Relief Team, and the Philadelphia Second Alarmers, the stair climb was an extraordinary event that brought hundreds of people together. Each person registered to climb or walk a symbolic distance equal to the height of the Twin Towers. Each carried a photo badge representing one of the 343 fallen FDNY members, giving profound meaning and a personal connection to those who made the ultimate sacrifice that day. Today we have Deputy Commissioner of Logistics, Anthony Snyder. Deputy Commissioner Snyder spearheaded this outstanding event. Welcome, Deputy Commissioner. Thank you, Craig. I appreciate it. All right, so tell us how this, uh, this whole thing came forth. Uh, well, uh, some time ago, uh, I've been heavily involved with the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation through some other events that we've done over the past 10 years, and uh, I felt this was just another opportunity to uh, move on, particularly when, you know, your wife of 30-plus years says to you one evening, why not do a stair climb and the next day you run into the commissioner and he says, did you ever think of a stair climb? So when you have those two behind you, that, that was my push. Uh, and then so the big thing there was to get a team together and uh, who better than the Family Association and Lisa Hogan and her folks with that, Jane Leary with Red Pauls, the second alarmers, Greg Massey. Uh, when you have these kind of folks involved with things, it just makes it so much more easy to accomplish and, and make it really a worthwhile, beneficial event uh, to symbolically support and financially support those survivors of those that lost their lives on 9-11 and also since then due to other issues that are directly related to the 9-11 incident. Okay, so what was the primary goal? The primary goal of the event was to? <clears throat> so the goal of the event is to uh, raise funds for the surviving family members of uh, the FDNY uh, 343 uh, to provide, whether it's counseling services that are ongoing, uh, financial support as we move forward. Cancer issues now have been a huge, huge issue uh, directly related to 9-11. So when you ask somebody what 343 is, particularly in the fire service, everybody knows we're referring to the 343 firefighters killed in the line of duty that day. But since then, over 160 have died from cancer or illnesses directly related 
to them working at the site of 9-11. And I know you know many of them because you were there. So it's, it's really a huge, huge thing. And, and we, don't, we didn't have the only one. There was a number across the country at different times. Lancaster had one locally. Uh, there's one in New Jersey coming up, maybe I think this week or next week, that Baltimore, uh, Washington, D.C., some in other areas of Maryland. So uh, it's, it's an awesome thing to be part of. All right, uh, previous, prior to the event, you did some traveling, didn't you, to, just to take a look at how other I uh, did. events were? I uh, did. I was fortunate to represent the foundation uh, in a volunteer status at the uh, Green Bay Lambeau Field uh, stair climb the week before ours, and uh, it was pretty phenomenal. First off, I've never seen the field, and the field is, you know, just, it's kind of awe-inspiring when you see that uh, with all the tradition that comes from there. but. Um, this was not their first year. Matter of fact, I believe they're in their fifth year, and they had 2,300 climbers. It was phenomenal. They had set up in waves. They had it was it was organized. It was what a phenomenal event. And I believe they were in the area of $110,000 raised, uh, which was phenomenal. And, and you know what? You get to see people, and uh, it doesn't matter if you know them or not. Firefighters and people supporting this, and it's it just becomes family. So tell us about the, the venue that we used here in Philadelphia. So Philadelphia, we were fortunate that the folks at the link partnered with us and were able to help facilitate uh, their building for us. And uh, what we did was uh, we started off with our opening ceremonies at, the, at ground level, and we had a beautiful opening ceremony. We had 315 climbers or walkers. Um, first year. First year. Uh, and which was, I think, phenomenal. You know, I'm not a, I'm a firefighter. I'm not a marketing person or whatnot. So that that takes some experience. But we started there, and then we uh, climbed up the steps of the what I'll call the stair tower on the northwest corner of the link, and then traversed up and down all the way, all the way back and forth, two and a half times. So. That equates to the 110 stories, and the symbolism with that is that in, uh, in New York on 9-11, the recorded highest floor that anybody got to, any of the firefighters got to, was the 78th floor. So what we are doing here by going to the 110th or in symbolization is we are completing their mission for them. And that, to me, is just profound for the fire service across the country. So that's what we did, and it was an awesome event. It was an awesome event that I was involved in. Um, so um, would you say that the event, being its first year and the participation, um, was it a success? The event was an absolute success. Um, we are probably in the area of $35,000 raised uh, for a first year and the number of climbers or walkers that we had. Uh, I do expect big things next year, sure. and I think, you know, what was great is we had people that participated uh, that came up to me or some of our other folks, our volunteers for the day, and actually volunteered for next year to be part of our, our organization. Uh, and these are people with some experience with uh, uh, how to get the word out. So I, ha I have some, some high hopes for next year, and I have a, a much higher goal uh, for next year. And I think with the, the city of Philadelphia behind us, uh, I think we will uh, certainly achieve that. So um, I know we talked about aches and pains and after the climb. Um, some of the feedback, what kind of feedback did you get from those that participated in the climb? The feedback was, was a combination of great, great event, great job, my legs are killing me. <laughs> um, so, and these were from people, now there's some people that joined us. Uh, we had one particular uh, gentleman joined us with his son. He's a captain from down in Virginia fire captain, and his son was with him in bunker gear. Uh, this was their fourth stair climb that they've attended, awesome. and he was also my, uh, for individual fundraiser, he was the top individual fundraiser for this event that we had. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal people, um, and he said this was one of the toughest. Uh, you know, and, and we had surviving family members who climbed not only for the benefit of the family, uh, surviving families of of uh, 343 and on 9-11, they also climb for their lost loved ones who were in the fire service who uh, were line of duty deaths in other locations at other times. But it's a representation of, of what we do in the fire service and how we're all family. Yep. 
take care of our own. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I was involved in the event, and the event was awesome, Chief. That's, that's Thank I you. mean, yep. it, was, it was a great event. Um, we can expect the stair climb to continue next year and in future years? I think we're going to get bigger and better, and we have some, some awesome ideas. Uh, we're planning our after, after action review to discuss uh, what opportunities we, we may not have realized or missed um, and how to make this just a, a blowout event, a major event for the city of Philadelphia and show people what we are and who we are. In, in addition to the families and, and, and those that died and you know, supporting those uh, survivors from 9-11, um, who else did it benefit? So it, the, the money also will benefit the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation, and that's key because the foundation, you know, initially when it was uh, created by Congress in 1992, so this is the 25th anniversary of that, and I just returned from the Fallen Firefighters Memorial Weekend where my wife and I uh, volunteer each year. Um, so the significance there is that what we do there with the foundation is uh, not only have we identified that we need to continue to take care of our surviving family members, but we also need to create the programs that uh, hopefully reduce uh, these line of duty deaths. And, and when we look at it, the opportunity is there. And I would love nothing better than for the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation to have to go out of business. Yes. Uh, that would be the goal, you know, so that we don't have to do this. Uh, so it's going to support programs for that and scholarships. It's going to be for the family programs. And that's specifically anything there will go to family programs and nothing else. Wonderful. So uh, you, you talked about the weekend that you just went to the National Fallen Firefighters. Yes. Briefly, can you just go into, you know, how was that weekend? I mean, was it supported? Was, um, I know the Philadelphia Fire Department, you know, Absolutely. Was, was, was supported. It, it, this is a weekend that every year when we get back, we describe it, my wife and I describe it as one of the most rewarding and taxing uh, emotional weekends that you can be part of. Yet, it, it's just a phenomenal event. We have friends from across the country that we see every year. Uh, returning survivors that we've become friends with. And we communicate throughout the year, but this typically is the only time we see them from all the way as far as California. Sure. Um, and you know, we become family with them and they've accepted us, which is probably the, the, the highest reward you can have from an individual perspective. So, you know, it's, it's just an awesome experience. And then to see the support, and then it's heart-wrenching too, because you see the families who, uh, of the firefighters we honored this year, uh, this year, a total of 95 firefighter uh, families we uh, honored, uh, 75 line of duty deaths from 2016, and a mul multitude from previous years we identified. Uh, and a lot of that was related to the 9-11 cancer issues uh, and the FDNY firefighters who have lost their lives in the recent, recent history. So it's been a, it was a great weekend, and we look forward to it every year to be part of that and support a family. Awesome. Um, well, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you again for joining us today. We certainly appreciate it. I definitely looking for, look forward to being involved in next year's Stair Climb Part 2. Absolutely. And for look forward future. to having you. Thank you. Coming up next, we'll hear about another effort from our Philadelphia Fire Department. But first, let's take a quiz. Our LaSalle University reporters took to the campus to see what people knew about fire safety. Play along and see how you do. Hello, my name is Josh and I'm here on LaSalle University's campus and today we're going to test some of the students on their knowledge of basic fire safety. Most fire fatalities are caused by flames, heat, smoke, or building collapse. I'd say, I'm going to guess, smoke. Smoke? That's correct. What lethal gas does smoke contain that's so dangerous? Monosodium, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide or hydrogen? It's carbon dioxide. Carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide? That's correct. When you're sleeping, which of your senses stays awake? Your taste, your hearing, your smell, or your sight? Smell? Hearing? Smell. It's actually hearing. What? That's why it's important to have smoke detectors that work. I thought it was so you could smell the smoke. Philadelphia law requires that homes have smoke alarms. Where should these alarms be located? Every level of the home, every room of the home, in sleeping areas, or in the kitchen? 
Every level of the home? Uh, on every floor. Every level of the home? That's correct. How often should you test your smoke alarm to ensure it's in good working order? Once a week, once a month, twice a year, or once a year? Twice a year? Twice a year. Once a month? Once a year? It's actually once a month. How far away from the fire should you stand when using a fire extinguisher? One to two feet, three to five feet, eight to ten feet, or twelve to fifteen feet? Three to five feet? Three to five feet? Eight to five feet? I'm gonna say twelve to fifteen because I'm not getting close to the fire, so. It's actually eight to ten, but I wouldn't want to either, so I can't blame you. How far should you keep portable heaters from combustible objects? like curtains, chairs, and tables. One foot, three feet, five feet, or 10 feet? Three feet. Three feet. Five feet? It's actually three feet. Oh. Space heaters need space. According to the National Fire Protection Association, on average in the United States, how many people die in in-home fires each day? One person dies, three people die, seven people die, or 11 people die? Seven. Seven people? Three people? It's actually seven people die. According to the National Fire Protection Association, what is the leading cause of home structure fires and home fire injuries? Candles, smoking, heating equipment like portable and kerosene heaters, or cooking? Cooking? Smoking? Candles. Cooking? That's correct, it's cooking. According to the U.S. Fire Administration, what's the leading cause of school fires? Cooking, arson, heating equipment, or chemistry class? Arson. Cooking. Chemistry class. It's actually cooking. Oh. Yeah. Kids can't cook. Mm -hmm. We hope you learned something interesting about fire safety. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Josh. I hope you at home were able to answer those questions. And if you didn't already know the answers, I hope you learned something. For our second half of our show today, we have Lieutenant Quadra Matthews from our Fire Prevention Division. Lieutenant Matthews organized the Philadelphia Fire Department's Lieutenant Joyce Craig Memorial Fire Safety Summer Camp. The camp consisted of two consecutive weeks of fire department related pursuits. The first week was an all female, female participant camp and the second week was a co-ed effort. Campers took part in various activities, including station visits, CPR familiarization, and even had the opportunity to don personal protective equipment and ride on an engine. Also here with Lieutenant Matthews are three remarkable campers who participated in the Joyce Craig Memorial Fire Safety Summer Camp. We'll speak with Lieutenant Matthews and get her insight as well as our campers' perceptions on their experiences. Lieutenant Matthews. Sir. So, what was the goal of the camp? The goal of the camp was to expose uh, school-aged kids between the ages of 14 and 18 uh, to the Philadelphia Fire Department, uh, other than just walking into a fire station. Uh, we're f so much more than fire suppression, and people do not know that. So the camp was to expose those uh, of that age uh, to steer them towards the fire, fire explorers and uh, gaining entry as employment with the Philadelphia Fire Department. So let's talk a little bit about the camp itself. Um, okay, so the name of the camp. Yes. Just give us some, you know, for our viewers, just explain where that name came from. The Lieutenant Joyce M. Craig Fire Safety Summer Camp was named after the first female to die in the line of duty in December of 2014. A very sad day, very sad occasion. Um, and it was to uh, memorialize her and never to forget her and her efforts and her uh, work ethic as a firefighter, not just a female firefighter, but a firefighter. So, um, it's good stuff. Mm -hmm. So how long was the camp? The camp uh, consisted of uh, one week, uh, one, for, one week for girls, all girls, and one week for boys and girls. So two consecutive weeks at the end of uh, the Parks and Rec summer camp. So now, the campers that attended the all-female 
were they also the same campers that attended the co-ed version in the second half? No, was sir. was it a new group of campers? No, sir. Uh, there was a, the first set of female uh, campers were all females, and uh, they couldn't attend for the second week because it would be a repeat of the first week. Okay. So we, want to, we wanted to expose as many children as possible for this first camp. Okay. Yes. All right. So um, tell us what, what, what kind of activities. You briefly touched on it in, in the opening, but, you know, what did you have them doing? I heard you ran a tough camp. So... <laughs> Just give us an idea of, uh, you know, what they did. Okay, uh, the camp consisted of basically uh, just f f familiarization with some of the activities that Philadelphia Fire Department uh, cadets do at the fire academy, such as formation, being on time, being responsible, being in the pro proper uniform, being in the proper place at the proper time, that kind of thing. And uh, when I came through the academy, uh, we had exposure to the department right before we graduated as far as to uh, entities that people just don't know about, like Fire Communication Center, mm -hmm. uh, Mar Marine Unit 1, which is our boat, um, the Fire Museum, Rescue 1, our heavy rescue, and uh, Engine 78, our airport facility. So it gave them an opportunity to see some parts of the fire department that they didn't really, they wouldn't even really know existed. Absolutely, sir. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Um, so uh, how do future campers enroll in the camp for next year, for 18? Okay. How do you, you know, what's that process? For 2018, we're in collaboration with Parks and Recs, and the application will be on the Philadelphia, uh, Philadelphia Fire Department website. And um, you'll see a, a big link that says camps, summer camps. And okay. you click on that link. And this next year, we hope to have it where it's um, automatically sent, where you don't have to mail the application in. OK. OK. All right, good, good stuff. All right, so enough of me and you talking. Let's talk to the campers a little bit about their experience. All right, and then you, you can actually point out which one you want me to speak to first. You know, which, who, who, who would you like me to speak to first? Well, in order of preference, if you have one. We call her Nene. Nene? Nene is um, one of our um, spokespersons for <laughs> uh, the first week of the female summer camp. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. So how did you find out about the camp, Nene? Um, my grandmother, she's a police officer, so she pretty much knows about all of these events. And I just like volunteering for a lot of this stuff, so I thought it'd be cool. So I came. I, I, heard, I heard something about you, too, Nene. I heard you were... Um, a police explorer? <laughs> Is that what I heard? Yes. So you flipped. Now you're a fire explorer? No. Or? Okay. No. I understand. <laughs> but you did enjoy the camp. Yes, though. I did. Okay. Good stuff. Um, so let me move on. So what did you expect to gain from the camp, son? Um, I expected to get some experience on the uh, fire, uh, fire academy because I wanted to join. And I expected to see how they work out, what they do the whole day. I did get some experience. Didn't get exactly what I wanted, but I got to try on a bunker gear that was hot. It was, it was very interesting. So, what did you ex what did you want? You said you didn't get what you wanted. Uh, what did you want? I wanted to learn pretty much most of the stuff that they do, how they work out, what exercises they do, uh, any special things that they do when they work out or, or so. Sure. And you'll have plenty of opportunity to do that. Our fire explorers, there are opportunities out there, and I'm sure Lieutenant Matthews will make sure you're connected with that. All right, so we'll come to you. All right, so what was your favorite part about the camp? I have to say sometimes during the camp when we have free time, the lieutenants would just talk to us, mm -hmm. and they would just tell us about their life experiences. Sure. And just they would have these really inspiring stories that really stuck with me. And that was definitely my favorite part. And was it, was it just fire-related life experiences or just talking about life? Some of them were fire-related, but it was just life in general, just really inspiring. That is awesome. That is awesome. Um, all right, so collectively, if you could take uh, your best experience away from the camp, what would your best experience be, my real best, quick? My best experience is the end. It was just so cool. Like, we were all hugging each other and crying, and it's like awesome. that one short span of a week, and we became like best friends. Cool. 
best experience? Um, my best experience, I would probably, it would probably be during the boat ride. I, uh, it was, it was, it was a little scary. Then I didn't. Yeah, I don't really know. I don't really know how to explain it, but it was, it was, it was kind of crazy. Cool. All right. <laughs> and I think you just described your best experience. Yeah. All right, fine. So as a surprise for for for. You, we so appreciate you coming on our show today, um, and we've got something for you. We've got something for you, and I don't even think you guys know about this, but um, you left such a good impression on, uh, on Lieutenant Matthews and the other instructors that um, you were actually picked for a reason, and here comes the reason. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna present you with something. Thank you. All right, so today we would like to give special recognition to our campers participate, who participated this past summer. We didn't tell them this, but we would like to present each of you with a certificate. It's just a way of, to show our appreciation of your positive attitude and all efforts put forth. Thank you, and you certainly deserve this as well. Remember, if you would like to find out more about LaSalle TV, you can check out our social media sites. And if you're interested in learning more about the Philadelphia Fire Department, visit our Facebook, Facebook page at Philly Fire and our Twitter page at Philly Fire Department. Uh, once again, I would like to thank our guests for joining us today, and I would also like to thank you for tuning in and watching. So until next time, fire is everyone's fight. Stay safe and remain free from fire.